Number 238 in Eureka's Masters of Cinema collection comes Made in Hong Kong. It's one of those titles that I, I had never heard of, knew nothing about whatsoever, and was in two minds about getting straight away. I thought maybe I'd hang off, but ultimately I ended up buying it straight away. And I made the point of just putting it on as soon as I got my hands on it, and I utterly loved this movie. Just deeply affecting, wonderfully shot, edited, great stylistic to it, uh, wonderful thematics. Um, it was filmed in 1997 when the handover of Hong Kong was happening and it's pretty much thematically about the disillusionment of young Hong Kong uh, people who are trying to deal with the fact that they don't feel as if they belong anywhere, they don't have any a future ahead of them but it's done in a wonderful style we are introduced to the character of mid-autumn or autumn moon depending on, on the translation and he is a young uh, man with no future he's a young man who can be stuck in a rut he lives with his mum his father has abandoned him a long time ago he just struggles to get by struggles to, to deal with life and the lack of opportunities and possibilities and he is leaning towards uh, criminality because it's the easiest option it's the one that is most uh, appropriate to him he sees his friend uh, Kyung who is getting married who is settling down who is changing his wayward ways and, and going for something a lot more um, typical and we also meet Sylvester who is someone mid-autumn feels somewhat sorry for but feels somewhat uh, paternal to as well and likes to look after Sylvester trying to teach him like as he's constantly been bullied constantly been picked on teach him how to just stay away from these people and whenever somebody gets out of hand with him he teaches him a lesson and we get introduced uh, as Sylvester and Mid-Autumn are making the rounds picking up some money for a low rent uh, loan shark they meet Ping Ping is a young girl who uh, seems to have this almost zest for life. She enjoys all the small moments. She's one of those manic pixie dream girl type of characters who just feels effervescent. You're just so energetic, a big smile. And we find out later in the movie that, that she has a, a fatal disease and has a ticking time clock on her lifespan and it's getting close to the end. But she enjoys everything, all the small moments. Uh, the non-essential things, the, the moments that mid-autumn is looking by, he's not enjoying, he's looking at the grander picture, she's picking out all the small things and just reveling in these little uh, moments and it's just such a wonderful character, uh, portrayed brilliantly, who intermittently comes in and out of the movie but is also uh, a ray of sunshine within this one. And we have these three characters and it's pretty much just about them hanging out doing what they do, trying to figure out their place in the world or their future place in the world, how it's going to be and this uh, constant weight or, or dark sky that hangs over them of the impending doom that they feel is coming. And it's pu punctuated with these really um, realistic moments of violence that aren't glamorised, that aren't uh, cinematic in any way, shape or form. They're rather brutal, they're quick and when they happen that they're primarily really shocking as well and it's through these moments that we see the lifestyle that, that mid-autumn has been brought up in to see what is all round about him to see how he's desensitised to a lot of what happens there's a moment where he's in a bathroom where he sees a man having his arm cut off and it's a little bit shocking eh, but it parallels with something that he was planning to do and he suddenly decides to change his ways and you can see within this character that he has he has an ability, an empathy with him and a willingness to look after his friends a willingness to, to fall in love a willingness to understand what is right and wrong and not do the wrong thing and even though he has all these wonderful traits you can't help but feel that something terrible is going to happen to this character because there is no way for him to use his positive abilities in a positive manner within the lifestyle that he's in. The filmmaking in this one is really stark and energetic and, and kinetic, 
it's different, it's edited really well, it has these constant moving cameras that really add a sense of energy and almost desperation to the proceedings when watching this one and it just has all these intercut moments that are just wonderfully put together. There's a specific scene where they're at a graveyard looking for the body of a young girl which is another big part of the story that I didn't mention because there's so many things going on and they use that wonderful photography several times in the movie going back to it at the end which is just a wonderful callback uh, one that I really enjoyed and it just there's a constant sense of death and despair throughout this movie it, it, the movie is kicked off by the, the suicide of a young girl at the start of the movie which I possibly should have mentioned earlier on um, that, that when she died she was holding two letters and it kind of leads Sylvester uh, and my daughter Mona a kind of trail to deal with, with these letters and, and, and the ramifications of her death uh, and whether it was um, a life wasted um, or, or a life extinguished at the point. Mid Autumn's, like, one of the most things that really affected me was his inability to see any worth in himself. Um, I found that really upsetting that, that he did have these traits, he had these good traits but he couldn't even recognise him within himself. <sighs> Just made in, in Hong Kong was an utterly delight of a movie. Um, and although it, is, it has depressing moments, although it has a kind of nihilistic nature to it, although it has this downward spiral of despair, it's one that I would put on again. It's one that I would enjoy because I love the characters. I like their interactions. I love the photography and the way the movie was shot. I think it's all wonderfully put together and it's just an absolute masterpiece. I was I was blown away by this movie, really was. It kind of caught me uh, off guard by how much I really liked it and I, I, I want to recommend it. I think if you're into uh, the Masters of Cinema collection, you should definitely be picking this one up. I think it is by far one of my favourite releases uh, from the label so far and just an utterly wonderful movie. I think I want to go and watch it again. Let me know your thoughts on Made in Hong Kong in the comment box below and I'll see you next time on Man V Film.